Alright, so this will be a quick video on how to make multiple polygons um, within a single feature class. So this will be useful for if you're looking at making management zones for a farmer or something of that sort or just finding different areas within a field. Um, so for this particular one, I just made an NDVI image and you can see there's quite a bit of vari variation within this field. Um, obviously when you're making management zones you're probably going to want to take into account more things than just an NDVI image. Um, you probably want to take in probably multiple NDVI images, some soils data, if you have any pH data, um, you know grid soil sample data will be huge for this. Um, but for this case just for demonstration purposes we're just going to look at this particular NDVI image. So we can see that the lower part of the NDVI is our red <clears throat> and orange and yellows, while our higher is over in this area with our dark blues and light blues. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and create another feature class, just like you would a field boundary. I've already done this, and you can just name it Management Zones, um, whatever you want to, and go ahead and add that to your map. And then once you get that, we can go ahead and go to Create. And there it is right there, Management Zones, our Polygon tool. And now you're going to notice that um, my little tool is actually snapping on to points that I've already used to create the field boundary. And how I did that is at the sampling, or snapping I mean, you turn the snapping on and you can set the settings on how it snaps but you can mess around with that, set it how you like. But the whole purpose is now we can come in here and go ahead and snap on to our field boundary to make everything nice and smooth. So right now I'm just highlighting an area of the field that looks like it might be similar to one another. And when you're done, you just double click on your original point and I'll go ahead and close that off. And now I would probably save my edits so that way I don't lose my polygon just in case I mess up on the next one. And we'll just continue on with the next one. You notice when I come around, it's going to snap on to my first one or my original polygon I made. And I can just go ahead and, and snap on to it the rest of the way up. And the more points you put, the longer it'll take to, to get this done. So there's a fine line between getting too in-depth and not being in-depth enough when you're making these zones. It just kind of depends on how much time you have on your hands. And now we're back to the first part and we'll go ahead and double click on that first point. Save our edits. And we can continue on. So I'm not going to continue on. I already have some already made. So we'll go ahead and shut down our NDVI composite. And we'll get rid of that one. And so here are the zones I created for the field. So if we go ahead and go into our attribute table, we can see that each zone is classified as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if we click on a particular one, it'll tell us what number it is. Like this is zone 1, zone 2, zone 3, and ending with zone 6 over here. So, um, it also displays the shape length and the shape area. Now, I have no idea what units this is, and this really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So what I can do is actually come in here and add another field and we'll name it acre area and we'll go ahead and put a, a space in there make it look a little bit nice and we're going to go ahead and save that and then we can go ahead and exit out of that and now we got our acre area being displayed over here in another column so if we wanted to see what area this is we can right click and go to calculate geometry Input feature will be whatever feature class we're on, which it should line up if you're within here. So in zone management, 
our field we're wanting to calculate is acre area and the property we, we are wanting to give it is area. So area units is going to be in acres. Um, you could put in hectares, square miles, whatever you want to do. But for this case, acres makes the most sense for people in America. In our coordinate system, we can go ahead and select WGS 1984 and go ahead and run this. So it came up with our acre area. So you can see our first management zone is 15 acres, our second one is 46, 17 on our third, 18 on our fourth, and so on. So if a person wanted to, they could go out and soil sample each management zone for particular nutrients. And we'll go ahead and I'll display or show how we could input those values into here. Just go to add, we'll add another zone here, or I should say column. And we'll name it profile in and ppm. So I can go ahead and save those changes. We can exit out of that. And now we have our profile in. Uh, let's go ahead and let's add another class <clears throat> just so we can make a nitrogen recommendation off this. And we'll say organic matter percent. Just name OM. And I'll put a space in there. Go ahead and save that. Okay, so in all reality you'd have all this data. I'm just going to make up some stuff just for the sake of time. So our profile in, um, let's say, I'm just going to put in numbers here. Organic matter, it probably won't change too much across the field. Ooh, it's not letting me put in points. Uh, we're just going to leave it as two down the board. I needed to change my data type. It's in long right now. I'd probably change it to double as order, in order to get decimal points because right now it is not accepting decimal points. Okay, and one other thing we need for a nitrogen recommendation would be our yield goal. So we actually come in here. I'm going to go ahead and save our edits. We'll add another one. Yield goal. Save that one. Now we come come back and we'll just make up some stuff here. We'll say our first one. 130 bushel an acre. 100, 120. 135. Say 115 and 1, 145. So we can add another class. Um, this kind of turns into Excel. Just make sure you save all your edits. In all reality, you could put this all into Excel and go ahead and create a join and relates for all this. And it would already be in there. You wouldn't have to input it in ArcGIS Pro fashion. And go ahead and make column for nitrogen rec. Go ahead and save this. And right here is where you can see all the data type is in long right now. If you wanted it to be a decimal, you'd want to change it to double when you do this. So we can come over and use our field calculator. <clears throat> and you're going to want to calculate our nitrogen rec. And you can just leave it as Python 3. And nitrogen rec is going to equal our yield goal. So you can go ahead and come down to our yield goal. And for case date, it's times 1.3. Or 1.6, I mean. And subtract off our organic matter. times 20 
minus our profile nitrogen. times 8, because we have um, basically 8 million pounds of soil that we're working with. Um, this is just basic soil fertility stuff. Um, if you don't know what I'm doing right here, you can, you can go look at the nitrogen recommendation from K-State and it'll really help you out. This should go ahead and run. I'll go ahead and put parentheses around all this, make sure nothing gets mixed up in the process. All right, so if we go ahead and run that, cross our fingers, and there's our nitrogen recommendations for each zone. And we can go ahead and display this within our map. So we can come to our symbology, change it to unique values. We'll display our nitrogen rec. We can go ahead and get rid of or all other values, and it'll go ahead and display all this. If you wanted to label it, we could add labels to it. Um, you'd want to change it to where it labels the actual number here. It looks like it's labeling the area, but you get the point. Um, so this is kind of an alternative way to making nitrogen recommendations <clears throat> differently than raster calculator. You're essentially doing the same thing only it's based more off of management zones. So I think this is the bulk of what I wanted to show in this video. If you have any questions just let me know. And like I said, instead of doing everything within ArcPro, you could easily create a CSV file in Excel and go ahead and make all these calculations within Excel, which might actually be a little bit easier than using ArcGIS Pro. But the main take home message is we can go ahead and calculate our area of each management zone that we create. And after that, we can go ahead and import any data that we would like to display. So with that, hope you guys have a great day and we will catch you later on.